Are you on Twitter, the online social network? If so, you're one of more than 200 million users active every single month. Your tweets serve as a global canvas for discussion from pop stars to presidents and everything in between. The Wall Street Journal's Deborah Kahn speaks with Twitter CEO Dick Costolo on the future of 140 characters. You've launched music, um, you are now investing more in, in TV and video rather. And if you, you know, take what you've done so far and you have to sum it up of where you're headed, what, what would you say? So when we refer to Twitter as a force multiplier for media, we really mean it in the context of, of that sort of Newton's second law of, of the mass of the media and the social accelerant. Twitter is uniquely suited to be that because of its live reach. And I think that that live reach aspect is what's so important. It's that that conversation has been taking place on Twitter while the program is on, while the media is being viewed in real time by people. Even this weekend, I was watching the British Open golf tournament and on air, one of the commentators said, boy, you really need to be following Jason Duffner, a player on, on, on Twitter right now, as he's commenting on what's going on here in the final day of the action. That sort of complementary nature of the two, where the conversation about this thing we're all experiencing right now is happening in that moment, that social soundtrack in the moment on Twitter is something we have invested uh, heavily in and how I think about us as it relates, to how I think about Twitter, us as we relate to media. Is there someone out there that you have an eye on feeling like, oh wow, this could genuinely be a threat um, to Twitter? I think sometimes when I, when I have this discussion of goals, not competitors, people uh, misinterpret that as uh, he's not paying attention to the competitive landscape. Of course I pay attention to the competitive landscape. You have to understand, and it's so dynamic, it's not one company that creates a beachhead in some area that ultimately like is another company's demise. It's this combination of things going on in this in this shifting digital landscape that um, that affects companies in different ways. Do you see in the long run, I mean this this model for advertising, um, could it possibly change in the case of, of Twitter? In that moment of the power outage during the Super Bowl, uh, Oreo and their creative team uh, tweeted out this dark uh, photo with a spotlight in the corner and an Oreo that had the subtitle, you can still dunk an Oreo in the dark. And it got retweeted and favorited, you know, incredible number of times. And that's, it's great to be able to point to that and say, that's what I was talking about. You know, the conversation is the canvas. And that conversation that they jumped into became the campaign. Uh, and I think we're seeing that more and more and more. Has something like Twitter actually had an impact on the way that we interact? I think that Twitter and other like services have had a profound impact on communications. We had a group of uh, Egyptian female scholars into our office uh, quite a while ago now, specifically pointed out this group of Pakistani women who were, who were on Twitter, who were commenting on what they were going through and conversing with them about that, and that that, um, that support and that knowledge that we're not alone and there are all these other people out there of like mind is incredibly powerful. And, uh, and I think that that has absolutely had a global impact and changed the way people communicate. And you know, I think it will continue to do that. Dick Costello, thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank